logging and debugging. Logs and debugs are two powerful tools when troubleshooting and monitoring the firewall. And it's a good idea to understand how log and debug works. And I will try to explain this here. The logging functionality in the firewall is based on syslog, which is a standardized protocol for sending log information to a logging host. In syslog, there are severity levels from zero to seven. So this is a standardized way that has nothing to do with Cisco. Syslog has been available for the last 30 years or something, and it has always been like this. So for each log line, because syslog works line-based, for each log message, there is a severity attached to that. That means that the more severe or critical the message is, the lower is the syslog severity level. As you can see here on the screen, we have severity level from zero to seven, where seven is debugging and zero is emergencies. That means that a log message that's saying that the processor is too hot and is about to melt should be logged as severity zero or one, while a log message saying that the user X is starting a connection to host Y on internet maybe should be logged on severity level five or six or seven. So the severity level is a tool to filter out how important and verbose information you want to see, where zero is most severe information and seven is most noisy and chatty. That also means that if you want to receive log messages with severity level three, you will also receive severity level messages to one and zero. So if you set up a syslog with severity level six, you will receive all messages that are severity six, five, three, two, one, and zero. But if you will set up a log with severity level one, you will only receive messages with severity one and zero. And you set up log to different types of destination. There are many different destinations available for logging, and I'll go through a few of them, but not all. All configuration that has to do with logging starts with the command logging. And you can set up logging to different destinations. For example, logging ASDM means that is the logging information you send to the GUI of the ASDM. When you start ASDM, on the first screen of ASDM, in the bottom part, there is a log running. And that's the output of this logging here. So if you set up logging ASDM 5, you will receive logging messages 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0 on your ASDM GUI. Logging buffered is the internal logging buffer in the ROM of the firewall. This is a temporary buffer, which is quite small in size. You can only store a few hundred lines or something. You can actually change the buffer size a bit but it is temporary because you lose the buffer when the firewall restarts. And you can see the buffer with a command show log, and you can use the logging buffer to configure how much information you want to store in that buffer. Logging destination console is the console port. And generally, you don't want to send too much information to the console port, because the console port is limited in bandwidth. It is only 9,600 BPS, which means that it is quite slow. And if you enable a lot of logging, you will not be able to see what you're doing on the console, but it will fill the buffers on the serial port. So you be careful with sending a lot of log output to console. Then it's better to log to an SSH session that I use right here. And I will show you soon how to do that. Logging enable is not the destination, it's a global command. The first command that you should add to your configuration is logging enable. It enables logging globally in the firewall. Furthermore, we have logging host, which is the syslog sending. That means that we send the information to an external syslog server. Logging host and an IP address tells us which IP address to send it to. 
And with a logging host command, we set the severity level for messages sent to that syslog server. So that is an external server that stores log messages to a disk. And that should be the primary long-term logging storage way. You can also send logs to email. It will send individual log messages with SMTP to your email address. So be careful with that because if you enable a lot of loggings to mail, you will send a lot of logs. The firewall will send a lot of logs. Be careful. Logging monitor is logging that goes to current telnet or SSH management sessions to the firewall. And I will soon show you how we can use that. Logging monitor sends messages to the telnet or SSH sessions. So let's try some logging. I am logged in with SSH to the firewall. I am in configuration mode and I can do logging monitor five or six to get much information. But as you see here, nothing happens. There is one more command that is specific for the logging monitor. And that is that you need to enable term mon to get the log output. And as soon as you use term mon, you will start to get your log output on the screen. I do term no mon to turn it off again. And let's have a look at the log messages here. Each line is line wrapped because of the resolution of my screen here. But it starts with a message number. These six here is the severity number for that particular log message. And this is the log message number. So each logging message type has a number. If I do not want to see a specific log message, I can turn that off. I can do no logging message and the number 302021. And that is stored in the configuration. And that means that if I do term mon, I will hopefully not see any 302021 teardown ICMP connection. No. Great. I can do reverse that by writing logging message 302021. As you can see here, while I'm writing and I get debug output and log output on the screen, I will not see the prompt. And one way to repeat the prompt is to press Control L on your keyboard. Control and L, as in Lima, rewrites the prompt. And if I press Control and keep the L down, I will see the prompt where I am right now. So each time I press that, I will see the prompt again so I know where I am. I add logging message 302021 again to remove the command no logging message 302021 that is currently in the running config. And as soon as I do that, I will also see the tear down ICMP connection again. So this is how I can turn off a specific message and turn on a specific message. And as you can see, these logging messages there are two log messages that are repeating itself right here, and it's because of the built up and tear down of ICMP, because I have a running ping through the firewall. And uh, they are both severity six. And let's say that I want to lower the severity level for my logging monitor to five, I will get rid of those messages. I write logging monitor five, press Control L so you can see the command, logging monitor five. And as soon as I press enter, I will get rid of those ASA-6 messages. I will still get five messages like this. So there is a log message telling which commands the user has entered in the configuration. And that log message has severity level five. And I will still see that because I have lowered the severity level for monitor to five and not six. So let's see, I talked about the term mon command. And the opposite of that is the term no mon command. And I will show you what difference it makes. I will connect a new session to the firewall. If I enable logging severity six, again, term mon, I will get a lot of output. The logging monitor six is a configuration command that is stored in running configuration. And that means that all current and future SSH and tenant sessions will get log output on severity six, which can be quite annoying. But to make sure that does not annoy other users connected to the same firewall, we have the term mon command. That means that even though this user in this session is interested in the debug output, the other user 
SSH in the firewall does not see that log output. And if that user also want to see the output, they do term mon to get that output on the screen. I do term no mon to turn it off for that session, but it doesn't do anything in this session. This is still getting the old output. If I turn no mon in this session, it will stop. And I can do term mon in this session to start the output on this screen, but nothing happens on this screen. So the term mon and term no mon is per session, per SSH or telnet session, and it is not stored in the configuration, and default is term no mon. So if you initiate a new SSH session to the firewall, you will not get the debug output. So you have to use the command term mon to enable that. Besides the logging, there are a lot of debugs that can be enabled. Depending on what you troubleshoot, you can debug almost anything. Be careful with debugging on the console because of the output and the limited bandwidth. I can, for example, one of the most handy commands is debug ICMP trace that shows a debug message for each ICMP traffic that is traversing the firewall. So for each packet going through the firewall, I get one line of debug output, and that continues on this screen. It does not interfere with the other session, because here we only have the syslog, terminal We have no debug output here, and we have debug output here. I can do show debug to see what debugs command I have enabled right now. Control L to see it, show debug. Let's clear the debug. Undebug all is a good command. Undebug all turns off all debug commands. Show debug shows which debugs are currently enabled, which are none in this case. And as I said, there are hundreds of debug commands that can be used depending on what you want to do. And for each debug command, like debug LDAP that I showed you in the AnyConnect part of the course, I had to enter a number after that to get any output because by default, I did not get the output I wanted. So the default is one and the number is from one to 255. And if I want to have really much information about the LDAP debugging, I raise the number to something like 200 or 255. Now I have no current LDAP sessions going in the firewall, so I will not get any debug outputs anyway. But you can use that to get even more information if you troubleshoot IPsec, you can do debug crypto isacamp and debug crypto iqv1 like that. Debug crypto iqv1. And you can use that command to get the debug output. And if you do not get any output, you can raise this number from 1 to 200 to get more information. So this was short about logging and debugging.